Now I'm going to have uh, an overview of the function curve editor. I have a little piece of animation on this guy, if I just press play. And then I have a piece of motion capture. If I open up the function curve editor, I'm going to look at the animation which is done on the hip. A few things to note. Inside the View tab, we can control exactly what gets viewed inside the Explorer view. So right now, I have just have my hip selected. If I click on Lock, now if I were to select another object, it won't update. Without Lock On, it's going to automatically update to that object. The majority of the times, you want to have Lock On, and this is persisted from scene to scene. So if I want to access my data, I can go kinematics, local, blah, blah, blah. But perhaps when you're going to be doing some editing, you don't need to do that. You can use this to access just the parameters you need. For instance, if we were to start with things like the flattening. If I were to flatten the parameter hierarchy, you can see that, there we go, it's just flattened everything to, to this list here. If I were to go to, say, flatten all, just flattening it right to the top level. But a lot of these parameters I really don't need to see. So I can start to work with things like the animated parameters or selected parameters. So if I do animated parameters I can start to have a look and see, well this is my marking set. I've got some uh, rotations as well as my position. I could then say, well okay, well maybe use things like just position animation and there we go we just isolated that and again these are persisted from scene to scene so the next object I grab if I update there we go it's just going to look at those properties there I can use these in conjunction with selecting individual parameters so for instance if I were to go into here I'm going to select my hip now I can play around with what I'm going to view. So all parameters, selected parameters, mark parameters. So again another combination of how to filter out that which you don't really need to see. I'm just going to view all parameters here. The decompose branch selection is for occasions where if I were to select all of this now, I have everything in a hierarchy. If I just wanted to see a flat list, I could then decompose that and therefore everything goes to the top level, like so. I can also extend the amount of information I want to see through things like parameter values, I can see it here, wireframe colors, so I can match the RGBXYZ inside here, so for viewing, it's going to be for understanding and viewing things in the Explorer. When we have view here, that's viewing the curves inside the uh, function curve editing area. Many of these icons are in fact just a representation of the commands inside here. And we can remove any of these through right clicking and there we go we can just remove the panels we don't want to see like so different types of selection tools can be found here and different values can be found here so if I were to select a single key we have the frame value as well as the numeric value of the actual key itself and these represent the slope value and this is scale and translate so you can do numeric inputs for a single key for multiple keys so to translate an X if I were to do say 1 plus I've just done that here I could also do it in the value field so it's allowing me to see the value the thing to note about all value fields is you can always enter in different calculations through plus, minus, divide, times, that sort of thing. So 
with one key selected. Every time you see a value field, I can simply do things like plus one. And I put a value here. If I don't ever see a value field, I'll do the opposite, which is things like one plus. Simple rule. If you don't see the value field, do the number, then the calculation. If you can see the value field, do the calculation, then the number. Like so. It's the same with any value field here, as well as in the F curve editor. There's also a whole load of preferences. It can be found inside here. And this covers not only things like the display, the snapping, the default types of tool, all the viewing that you want to see. Curve processing is very important for things like plotting data and resampling, uh, the paste options for copying and pasting, and also the audio options. They can also be found under file preferences as well. I'm dealing with the motion capture data, if I were to select my thing here and just update this, I now have here all my mocap. Also notice it's working in local and global time as well. So right now we can see that it starts at frame 32, but the original source data, if I go to local time, there we go, was done at frame 1. So when it's white with an L, you know it's local time. When it's black, it's global time. If you select a single curve here, I can do things like view selected parameters, and I'm just working on a single curve. It also turns blue over here. The HLE tool is ideal for things like motion capture. It currently has an absolute offset, so when I click on this, it allows me to have a single curve to start to manipulate, like so, the entire curve. Just as with anything, I can insert extra keys and have that level of control. That's an absolute offset. A relative offset will actually apply a similar sort of thing, but one key every 10 frames. So it just gives you a little bit more control automatically, like so. And absolute scaling means that as I move this up and down it will scale towards 0 and 1. So there we go, that's 0, it'll fade out. If I start to move this, you can see it will scale up. Just the same thing, scale to 0. Very useful way to ease in and ease out animation or complex data. For multiple clips, very useful thing, just to bear in mind, little tip here, is for playing around with tag points, you have the same sort of control as you do over the curves. So it's, it understands, just like in a component mode, whether or not you're in tagged points or selected curves. You can use things like the region tool here, do things like scale negatively, like so. If I was no tag points. There we go. It's not going to under, it's not going to give me the region tool until I start to select and there you go. So you can do one or the other. And then the tool comes into play. So this is the animation editor. That's because it embeds all of the editors. It's like the dope sheet. If I were to uh, go in here and expand, there we go scripted operators, as well as expressions. So animation editor is all of them, and the function curve editor is just the function curve component of the animation editor.